So what's the worst that could happen if I don't dry my filament? Today we're looking at the Creality Space Pi X4. It's a filament dryer that offers the usual features that we know and love, but a little bit extra. I'm talking about a touch screen. I'm talking about dual zone drying. I'm talking about active dehumidification. And my favorite feature, automatic desiccant regeneration. Let's see what it's all about, shall we? Hey, we're opening this box that came from Shang Tsung Creality. Ooh. So for starters, Creality sent this over free of charge along with a couple of spools of their filament. I plan to feature these spools a little bit more heavily in some upcoming content, but here's what we have. First of all, there's two spools of Creality Hyper PA6 and PA12 carbon fiber, which is sick. Free carbon fiber nylon is very cool. Also, we've got two spools of this Solian brand filament, which I think is like a Creality property of some description, like Creality cooperates with this brand or they own this brand or something. For all intents and purposes, I'm gonna call it Creality PLA. But that brings up a good point. PLA in general isn't really too bothered by moisture or absorbing moisture. Sometimes it can help to dry it and sometimes you'll see different results if you're printing with dried PLA versus PLA that's absorbed some moisture. Feel free to argue more in the comments about that. But nylon, on the other hand, it's very hygroscopic. That's to say, it absorbs moisture very quickly. And if you print it when it's waterlogged like that, you're gonna have a bad time. But the other thing about the nylon stuff is that it needs to be dried hot. It can't just be dried by any filament dryer. So it's pretty lucky that not only can this Creality Space Pi X4 dry four spools at once, it can cook the filament up to 85 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to dry your carbon fiber nylon. Now right off the bat, I wanted to compare some wet filament results versus dried filament results. But I didn't want to use this carbon fiber nylon because I didn't want to risk ruining it. So I chose something a little bit more tame to expose to a lot of moisture. I set this TPU and PETG out in my garage for a couple of days to soak up that Midwestern humidity really good. And my goal was simple. I was gonna print a couple of models with the filament wet, and then I was gonna print the same models after I had dried it. Now for our testing, you have guessed it, we're gonna print a couple of nacho testers. This is the model that I use whenever I'm testing a new printer, testing a new filament, whenever my kid wants another toy, it's always this one. Now I'm gonna be doing all of our prints today using our A1 Mini that we upgraded a few months back. These items are from Big Tree Tech's Panda line and they're super cool. And if you want a free A1 Mini, complete with these very upgrades, you should check out our second channel. It's called You Like That? You Like That? Yeah, you like that. We do challenge videos over there, and to celebrate our first release, we're doing a fat giveaway. There's a handful of printers and several different filament packages up for grab, and all you have to do is watch the first challenge video that we did, listen for the special phrase in that video, and then fill out your entry form that you'll find in the description. And once that video hits 50,000 views, then we're gonna start giving things away. Perhaps we'll even start giving things away sooner. Now, in addition to printing that first regular nacho tester that we always print on the channel, I wanted to print something that was really gonna show off the stringiness of wet filament. So I imported the standard model into my slicer and I took some geometry that I got from Tinkercad and kinda started putting things together. I wanted to honeycomb the model in such a way that it forced the printer to start and stop a lot of times during the same layer. That in turn would create a lot more opportunities for stringiness, which in this case we actually want. So with the filament properly exposed to the moisture of my garage and with our tests lined up, it was time to set about printing. All right, let's see what we've got. So overall, not great, but we expected that. So looking at the TPU one, you can see there's a lot of like foaminess. That's due to all the moisture being baked off as soon as it hits the hot end. So all that is released as gas instead of water. Also the layer adhesion. Let's see, can you focus on you? Yep, oh, it's trying to find my face. 
As for the PETG one, it doesn't really exhibit as drastic of a problem. There's not really strings present at all. And that PETG not only sat out in my garage for a day, but has never been in a bag the entire time I've had it open for the past month or so. So it's just been out in the universe. Though the PETG did give me issues, it didn't stick to the plate initially, so I had to make the bottom portion of the nacho solid so it would have a little bit better first layer. And even then it got kinda to the end and then knocked off the plate again, so maybe that won't happen when I dry the PETG, maybe nothing will change when I dry the PETG, who knows. Now one other nice thing to note is I was able to load the TPU into one side of this machine while I was finishing printing with the PETG, so I didn't have to commit to turning on the dryer for both of them at the same time. It's a good feature having the dual chamber design. Total fan of that. Once the PETG print was done, I was able to load it into the machine even though an hour and a half had passed and I could start it on its own dry cycle at the correct temperature for that material. It's all good stuff. And then finally, the last thing that I wasn't really aware of, this machine has an auto function where it tries to maintain the humidity that you set for each chamber automatically. So while I had the lid open and I was doing some B-roll shots and that kind of stuff, the thing actually turned on because the humidity in that chamber became too high and it sensed it. Pretty cool. And then if you're wondering how loud this machine is, because filament dryers can be pretty loud, I'm standing right next to it with my mic on and you can probably hear it in the background, but it's not like super loud. It's definitely noticeable though. Can you hear it? Now that we know what happens when we print with these spools wet, let's dry them and see how they compare. And of course, while we wait for that filament to dry, let's cover a couple of the other features of the X4 that I personally enjoy. First of all, the thing has a touchscreen on it. More often than not, every machine that comes out, printer or accessory, has a touchscreen on it now. And that's fine, and I'm a fan of it. It wasn't always like this. There was a time where you had to use actual real life buttons. Oh, scary. Now the interface itself seems responsive enough and straightforward, but that touchscreen enables some features of its own. Things like selecting your left and right bank, sure you can do that with the touchscreen, but you can also do things like set presets or different scenes different drying settings that you typically use can be saved. That way you don't have to think as much when you're loading your stuff up. If you normally have PETG on this side and carbon fiber nylon on this side, you just boop, boop, boop over to that setting and there it is. Your preset's ready for you. But there's another thing that we're seeing more often these days when we're talking about filament dryers in particular. Things that have to do with automating the process even further. Let me explain. When we're drying filament, there's a few different things that need to take place. For starters, the filament's gotta be heated to bake the water out of it. But now that moisture's in the air inside of the filament dryer. This is typically where desiccant packets come in handy. Aside from removing stray moisture that's caused by loading and unloading filament and opening the door and that kind of thing, the desiccant can also absorb the moisture that's baked out of the filament. Now that's great and everything, but personally, I'm not a fan of desiccant. That's just one more thing that I have to tend to when it becomes oversaturated and can't absorb any more moisture from the air. Well, wouldn't you know it, the Space Pi X4 has some solutions for us. First of all, it uses a fan and like this one-way valve kind of system to remove the moisture that you cook out of that delicious filament. And then to take it a step further, that desiccant pack still lives inside of there, but it's inside of the heating loop. Now the intention with that placement allows the filament dryer to regenerate the desiccant packet while it's drying the filament. So that means we don't need to take that desiccant out when it's become oversaturated because the filament dryer bakes it out of there. The system automatically takes care of that. The only thing you as the user are responsible for is loading and unloading the filament. You like that? I sure do. Now there's more things going on here, like the dual chamber design that allows you to run one side hot and one side a little bit cooler if you need to, as well as the typical array of features like a filament outlet on either side of the machine so you can print directly from this box. But the automation of the filament drying and the active conditioning and control of the air inside of there, those are the standout features for me. Well, now that our filament's freshly cooked, let's reprint these models and see if we notice a difference, because there should be a huge difference. Once again, we're printing on the A1 Mini that's been upgraded with the Big Tree stuff just to keep the tests consistent. And again, we're printing standard nacho and honeycomb nacho to see how we've done. All right, 
I think my point's been proven, but let's take a look at the TPU. So as you can see, uh, the results are drastic. Now there's still some stringing because it's TPU, it's gonna be stringing, but like, it's not even a comparison. And this was only drying for four hours and the machine was recommending eight hours. Do I even need to say more? So drying filament works. And this machine is good at drying filament. So what did we learn? Well, if you have filament dryers or you know about filament dryers, you probably didn't really learn anything. This thing's a filament dryer. But this was a great visual to demonstrate what it looks like when you print with filament that's been saturated and what it looks like to print with filament that's dried per the manufacturer's specifications. As for the SpacePy X4 filament dryer, I'm a fan. The thing's pretty good. It combines a lot of features that are kind of no-brainers for me. And really, if your filament dryer doesn't have all of these features, you're kind of behind, I think. So thanks to Creality for sending it over. I'm happy to report that it's a winner in my book. It really would have sucked if it wasn't. But you can check the link below if you want to learn more about it or if you want to get one or anything like that. Also check out the second channel and get that first video up to 50,000 views so I can give you some printers. Bye.